Hi everyone, this is Meli. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about ultra processed foods and I would like to start by asking you if you've ever wondered why most prepackaged foods expire in like a year's time. Ready to eat foods are not supposed to last that long. I mean, can you imagine having a cookie you baked six months ago? However, it seems natural to us to have a snack that could last that long without changing its flavor, smell or appearance. I mean, if it looks good, it must be good. And you don't have the time to worry about what the ingredients are, what the sugar fat content is. I mean, that's a manufacturer's job, right? Well, maybe you should think again. As smart consumers, we should be able to tell the difference between the foods we're buying and ultimately putting into our bodies to make knowledgeable decisions. Snacks and other processed food items first arrived at stores in the early 1900s and quickly became very popular. People bought them because they were delicious and they made their lives so much easier. The problem is nowadays, consuming these foods has become so frequent they have begun to displace other nutritious foods such as fresh fruit and vegetables and homemade meals. We have gotten so used to consuming these foods, it's now quite hard to set them apart from actual healthy foods. So, to keep it simple, the making of ultra processed foods goes something like this. It all begins when manufacturers take different substances from Plant foods, which are usually the same high crops such as corn, soy, wheat, bitter or cane, and animal carcasses, which are basically the leftovers of meat industry. These substances then go through a process, which can be hydrolysis, this is breaking the food into parts, hydrogenation, which means saturating the bonds in a compound to aid stability, and other chemical modifications. Once modified, these substances are mixed together and added some chemical preservatives, flavor enhancers, colors, emulsifiers, thickeners and whatnot. Finally, they're wrapped in a beautiful shiny package and sent to your closest grocery store. Then you go and buy it, it tastes delicious obviously, because these additives are not only meant to make the products last longer, but also to make them hyper palatable. This means it's really hard to stop eating them. And then you just throw the package away and move on with your life. Because who has the time to worry about these things? Well, maybe you should take some time to worry, because these attractive and tasty treats are consistently taking a toll on your overall health. They are high in either fat, sugar or salt, and most times in a combination of the three. Reports issued by the World Health Organization and the World Cancer Research Fund state that commonly consumed processed food and drinks are probably related to obesity and non-communicable diseases such as heart disease, diabetes, stroke and cancer. Just so you know, non-communicable diseases are responsible for almost 70% of all deaths worldwide. That being said, let's talk about which are the ultra-processed foods. How can you identify them? They usually have a long list of ingredients and most of them are of exclusive industrial use, meaning you won't find them in your kitchen. So if you see names like high fructose corn syrup, modified oils or modified starches, soy protein isolate, dextrose, soy lecithin, then you, my friend, have found a textbook ultra-processed food. To go over some examples, on top of the list we have carbonated soft drinks, candies, ice cream, cookies, most chocolates. But I think that goes without saying, we can all identify them as unhealthy. But, and here comes the eye-opener, other processed foods are mass-produced packaged breads, energy bars, breakfast cereals, fruit yogurts, all products which are advertised as super healthy. These are foods we have every day just because there's a lovely lady in the front of the green packaging going like this. So my question for you today is, what are you having for breakfast? How do you manage that sweet tooth in the afternoon? Do you grab an energy bar before a workout? Or maybe some toast? These are foods we eat every single day. They count. So, I hope this was helpful. On future videos, I will expand on the subject and talk about how to further analyze this type of products because obviously there are some healthy and delicious options out there. I will also show you recipes you can easily make at home with nutritious and inexpensive ingredients. As a take-home message, I want to say overall food should be enjoyed. I mean, it's a huge part of our lives and it allows us to share with loved ones but it's also meant to nourish and keep you in good health. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please comment below and I will see you next week.